Okay, everyone, I'm back, and we're working on Yuletide, page three. Yuletide, page three. This is from the 8x8 collection pack. And uh, I can't tell you how much I just am adoring these, these images. I'm having quite literally a difficult time adding anything to it. But I'm, I'm doing it, but it's hard because they're so pretty. So I'm going to use this as the base, and this is going to be a very simple page. I've got a card here that is going to have this beautiful... Um, ephemera card they call these bits and bobs so it's a little different titling but it essentially is the same thing where you've got um, this beautiful card and then you, you can write on the back or journal on the back or even add a photo so there's two of each design so I'm going to use one for the cover I'm going to use the flip side for um, some journaling space and then you'll also have room for a photograph here this is basically going to be a finished four by four uh, card so I'll, I'll tell you what you need to start with you're going to start with an eight by six eight by six and you're going to score it four inches and like i'd mentioned previously on page two what i like to do is get it the right height um, in this case it's eight inches and then cut across and then just fold my eight and a half or eight yeah, eight and a half in half at four and a quarter and then trim that edge so you get this nice finished edge. Sometimes you'll score, you'll fold it and you see that the edges don't meet perfectly. So I like to fold it and then trim it uh, as a unit once it's closed. So that's what I've decided to do. So just like on page two, what I'm going to do is mat the back side of the card <laughs> and I can't, for some reason this is stuck to the table. It's a little bit tacky. I'm going to mat, mat the back side of the card because I think it really makes it pop against um, the background here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add this to the card, to the front. And you can go ahead and put this down because the magnets are going to go on the inside. And I inked the edges. Um, it has a white core, so I inked the edges with mahogany, which is back in stock again. Um, we were having some issues with our uh, getting anything from the supplier, and they're having issues like everybody else, so nothing new there. But it is back in stock. That is my go-to color for almost everything. I don't distress into the pattern. I pretty much white knock off the white core. Um, and then uh, if it's got a true white background, I don't ink at all. So, but if it's a cream or anything like that, I, I want it to really stand out against this cream cardstock and have that nice crisp look. Okay, on the inside of the card, we're gonna need to add a couple magnets and I've got them sitting right here. And here's my white tape. So this is going to, I'm gonna have it open left and right as a traditional card. Sometimes I'll have it open against, away from the spine, but I'm gonna keep it simple. Do that, and then we can place the other magnet here. Close the card. There we go. Burnish that into place. And the tape is really meant to help soften the edges of the, the magnet because they're not beveled. Um, as most of you know who have worked with magnets. So it just helps soften it so you don't have this hard edge popping out from um, beneath your image. Now, I've got to think about this. Yeah, that's right side up. So again, I've inked all my edges. So let's go ahead and lay in the uh, inside piece. I think I would re reserve this for journaling, but you could easily put, you know, two small three by three photos here, a four by six on this side. You really have a lot of choices. And it's so hard to put glue on that, I tell you. I think so far, this is my favorite Christmas collection. I love everything graphic, but I'm really digging this. It's very nostalgic. I like it. Got a little bit of ink. So always try to keep some wet wipes around when you're working with cream because it's very easy to get your cream 
get glue on your fingers, pick up dirt somewhere and get it um, run across your beautiful cream cardstock. Now here is the mat and the mat is six and one eight by four and one eight. So four and one eight by six and one eight. And it's just gonna go on the back side of the card like so. Centered and it'll just help this whole thing pop against um, the foundation page, which we'll work on next. so I can burnish this all into place. Isn't that gorgeous? I think the brown really adds a lot to it. And I'm using a basil, and I couldn't see the name of the color. Let me see if I can get a full sheet and it's got a name on it. Uh, it's, it's really hard to read, sorry. Bear with me. Cardellina, but I'm not really, I, I think that's just cardstock in French or Italian. Uh, there, it doesn't seem to have a name. The number is 304-220. Um, oh, here it is, Candy Bar. There it is. Okay, so the name of this is Candy Bar, so uh, sorry I didn't notice that sooner. I think I had... The piece I had picked up only had this print on it, so the name of the cardstock is Candy Bar, and it is uh, Basil. And it just happened, like I said, to be some cardstock I had handy. Any deep, rich brown is going to work. Okay, lovely. Okay, now we're going to pull in page three. So this is going to be the base, and I need to make sure I've got my pocket page going the right direction, and I do. So this is going to go here. And as you recall, this is what's on page two. Which is just so elegant. This is actually making me feel inspired to decorate my house for Christmas. And I have a confession to make. I didn't last year. Isn't that horrible? I didn't put up any decorations last year. That's pretty, pretty sad. This year I'm going to do it. Normally, I put up two Christmas trees. I do my mantles last year. Nothing. And I do it more for myself than anybody else because I don't think anybody else in the house cares. But this year, I'm doing it. So that is my plan for Thanksgiving uh, holiday is to get my act together and get my Christmas decorations out. Okay. I'm just kind of moving this around to decide where, you know, I want it. I definitely want to make sure this is revealed and I don't want to cover that up. And I don't want too much bare space because it's whatever I leave is really not enough to put another photo. So you might as well keep this as your um, primary design element. So I'm trying to decide how much, if any of that, I want to cut off. And I think that's it. Yep. So let me measure that real quick so I can share with you how far I'm coming in from the edge. So it really wants to move. I'm coming in an inch and a quarter, okay? One inch and a quarter from the edge, and I think I'm coming in about a half inch from the bottom. Just eyeballing it, yes. So there you go. So we're coming in an inch and a quarter and a half inch up. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the whole panel down. I was kind of thinking about making a pocket behind this, but I've decided not to. Okay, now I'm going to eyeball it and then adjust it. That's an inch and a quarter.
I can't wait to hear your feedback on on the paper if you guys buy this and do your own because I'm loving it. Loving, loving it. Not just the images, but just the quality of the paper. Blue Fern's really doing a great job. And it's new to some of you, um, as it is to us. We haven't been uh, using it, but I really love it. Look at that. Okay, so I still need to pick out um, a pattern to go on the B side of this pocket page. So I will be back. And then when I've chosen that, I'm going to lay it in, and then I'm going to bring page two back in, and we're going to do a little embellishing. I don't usually do that, but I really, um, I, I really want to use a bunch of these... Um, die cuts that they have. Now, one of the things I want to share with you is um, on all of the die cuts, there was this very wide white band, um, and I didn't like it. So I went in and I actually fussy cut down that white band on all of these, which, you know, that's really up to you, but you'll notice how, how bold the white is against the cream and the rest of the patterns. It's a little bit shocking. So, um, so I've decided to go ahead and cut that down so it, it's not the, the only thing that you see. Even this is not a pure white compared to this. So I wanted the image to stand out, not the border. Um, if you decided to build this book on white, it might not look so strong, but I, I thought that the patterns lend itself more to cream. So that is some of the feedback that I'm going to give to Blue Fern is I thought the borders around um, these pieces were a little bit too white. It's a it's simple enough problem to solve, but that's that's what I think I'm going to use um, between page two and three. But I haven't figured out how to use it yet. So I'll be back soon um, with the B side, and then also we're going to pull in page two and do some embellishing. Be back soon. Hey everyone, I'm back. I picked um, the pattern that I want to go opposing here, and this is the sort of cable knit sweater, um, but I really liked um, this little bit of burlap here, sort of pulls in this brown, and you can kind of see the browns over here too. So I'm going to use this here, and this is from the 8x8 collection pack. Very elegant collection, I'm really enjoying it. I just put a little glue on my tape there for any of the new viewers. It allows me to slip the page, the um, cardstock back and forth until I get it where I want it. The tape grabs um, if you don't put anything on it to start with. Um, but I also, the other reason I like to put tape on is to soften the edge, but also um, the glue doesn't really want to dry on top of the metal. It will, but it takes a lot longer because there's no tooth on the metal. It's just slick. So it takes a lot longer to dry on it. That's the other reason why I like to put tape on top of the, um, the magnets. So I know I'm getting good adhesion um, around and on top of the magnet. Yay! Okay, in a few minutes, I'm going to pull back page two and three, and we're going to look at adding some embellishments. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got both my pages in, and I've gone through all my... Um, uh, die cuts and I've I've chosen these skates to um, keep with the skating theme from the page three. I'm going to add it to page two. Now I'm going to do something a little bit unusual and this doesn't fit nicely on any of the panels that I created but I really like the image. So I'm going to apply it right here. Now I can't do that because of the way these both open. Um, at least not as an entire picture. So what I've done is I found my location and then I did some pencil marks here and here and I'm actually going to cut this image. This is going to be on the panel. The skates are going to be on the base and the tip of this skate is going to be on this panel. So it's going to look a little, little different um, but I like the idea. So we're going to see how that goes. So I'm going to, I marked it right here, trim it. And the idea is the skates are going to go right up to the brown point, and this is going to come right down to the brown point, just like so. So when you open it, actually I need to scoot it in a little because the skates were off the page. So um, when you open it, um, you won't see this image, um, but when it's in the fully closed position, you'll see this completed image. So I'm going to start by going ahead and adhering this. 
no! Shoot, that's a lot of glue. Oh wow, it came right up. Another reason I love blue fern. It came right up because it's kind of smooth. Well, that's delicious to know. Okay, so I need a little bit more glue. Let me see, I missed a spot. Okay, so you need to place this in conjunction with the skates because the skates are wider. You need to make sure they're on the, on the base page. And then we're gonna push it right up to the edge. And that looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna push that all in place. Now the other thing we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to trim the tip of the toe. So we are going to do that by marking it. I'm gonna do that with you right now, as soon as I find a pencil. Mm. What did I do with my pencil? Hmm, well, here it is. I was blending in with something else. So I'm using the, um, the, the brown cardstock here as my mark point. And I'm gonna mark the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna cut it. And I just made a, a mark right here that I need to erase. I need to find my needed eraser. I'll do that in a minute. Okay, I can see my marks. I'm going to use um, a blade and a straight edge. Okay, there we go. So now we can go ahead and add our skate down here. Skates, plural. I'm not inking this edge because I don't want to emphasize that it's cut in half or that there's a cut mark there. I can always go back and add a little ink if I feel like I need to, but I don't think that's the right answer. We'll see in a second when I put it in. Okay, we're just lining up these pieces. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we're ready to add this little tip, which goes right here. And actually it turns out that it's gonna cover the, the little um, mark that I made with a pencil. So I don't have to stress about that anymore. I really didn't wanna have the, sh the uh, skate tucked inside the panel. I wanted it to be uh, complete. So that's why I chose to embellish it this way. And now we're going to look at both page two and three together and see what we think. What do you guys think? I like it. So when you open it, you still don't have any interference, right? There you go. I like it. I don't think I've done that before. It's kind of an interesting idea. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. That's page two, obviously. Page three, we're all wrapped up here. Be back again with page four.